What's up guys, welcome to the video. I'm Rob Arnold and today I'd like to show you some cool tricks and techniques, not necessarily secrets, but just cool techniques that my band Chimera has been using live and on the albums for years and techniques that I still use in my playing every single day. I'm gonna break them down, show you each one, give examples, teach you how to play them so hopefully you can be firing off rad riffs before you know it. If you've seen these before, heard them before, I guarantee by the end of this video, you'll still have picked up some useful nugget that you can apply to your playing. So hopefully that sounds good and let's get right into it. First up on the list. Octave chords. Okay, so a regular power chord. We are in drop C right now, C, G, C, F, A, D. Low to high, C, G, C, F, A, D. And we're just gonna take a normal power chord here, fifth fret, fifth string, seventh fret, fourth string. But instead of playing the seventh fret on the fourth string, we're gonna play the seventh fret on the third string. Those are octaves. Five on five and seven on three are octaves in one another. Obvious. Doesn't matter where you do it. I like to use my pinky. You can use your ring finger, that's fine. But the pinky to me gives me a little more arch to create this chord. And that sounds nice and smooth like that because I'm muting the fourth string. I basically don't want to hear it at all. I don't even want that natural harmonic to come out of it. So when I hit this chord, I'm only hearing the fifth string and the third string. The fourth string is muted in there and I'm barely just putting the string against the uh, little pad of my finger here to kind of mute it out. Again, if you don't want that natural harmonic, it's just coming out that way because of the demonstration here. But in the chord, this is basically silent, unless I really isolate it like that. So these together is what you want to hear. The fifth and the third string. Cool little trick that I just have kind of come across or whatever is using intervals half step, Full step. So no matter where I start, let's say here, again, that's five and seven. Five on the fifth string, seven on the third string, go up a half step, then up a whole step, then up a half step, then up a whole step, half step, whole step, half step. That's the pattern. Hear how cool that sounds? To me, it sounds kind of I don't know, uh, triumphant and Egyptian. And all that, that little pattern there again was just a half step, then a full step, a half step, then a full step. And you can do it in any little order. Cool little stuff. And again, that's how so many of these Camaro riffs are made. You know, six. Implements of destruction. The dehumanizing process. Inside the horror. So a great, cool chord that in combination of other chords, I mean, if you made an entire song based around just those octave chords, it may not get monotonous. And you, you know, every guitar player, singer has kind of a bag of tricks you can choose from. And if you overdo something, it doesn't have the same effect. So use it sparingly, use it with other chords, you know, power chords, stuff like that, and then sprinkle those in. Another cool thing is for harmonies. Your, other, your one guitar player, the other guitar player. So you guys can harmonize each other. Again, sprinkle it in here and there. It'll be a really cool effect. So keep those in mind, the octave chords for cool sounds. Next up. That's a little tune called Frozen in Time by Camaro. I'll get more into that in a second. But the chords I want to look at here are what I've always called flatted fourths. Dude online in, the, in the, uh, the comments told me that those are called perfect fourths. I don't really know. Honestly, I don't care. 
Um, I mean, I appreciate any insight and all that, but, um, you know, I don't have, I can't tell you what it really is, what the facts are, or whatever. So let's just call them fourths. All right. So those are just like power chords in a drop tuning, but instead we're going to do it on the fifth and fourth string. It gives a little different sound. Listen, this is bolder and deeper. It's more metallic sounding. You hear that when I go to the fourth versus the power chord, it's got a slightly higher register. It's because it's eliminating the sixth string. I'm not hitting the sixth string. I'm just hitting, in this particular case, four on the fifth string, four on the fourth string. And these are real cool chromatically. It means one note after the other, up or down. Um, again, with that, uh, that half step, full step thing. Just like the sound of that and again now combine this with other chords almost to me it gives like a megadeth kind of sound so i don't know if that was a good megadeth example or not but uh you know so Real cool, uh, real cool sound and just another variation of a chord, okay? I basically play four types of chords. Power chords, which look like a bar in the drop tuning. Um, a regular power chord, everybody's used to there. What you would do in the same shape, three frets apart there. Right here I'm on three on five and five on four. You would do the same thing to a power chord on the sixth and fifth string, but because we're in a drop tuning, it's not there. In a drop tuning, the, drop, the C is dropped a whole step, two half steps. So if we go up a whole step, there's the chord. And instead of playing it like that, it's easier to play like this. And I'm only hitting the sixth and fifth string together. If I do the fourth, I'm hitting the fourth and fourth, fifth and fourth string together. You can definitely hear the difference there. Listen to that register. Lower. So, so, so far we got two types of chords. Power chord, fourth, regular power chord. Octave chord. Listen to that. I'll play the same riff four different ways. Regular power chords. Fourths. Power chords. Octaves. Frozen in time. Third fret there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On the sixth string. Oh, one, three, sixth string, but power chords. Open. And then fourths, three to four. Oh, three, four, fifth and sixth and fifth string, then fourths. Four up to six. Again, we're doing that half step and then full step. Didn't even notice that until right now. Then oh six, six, seven. So the pattern. following the pattern down the same way we went up. Notice that? Full step, half step, full step, half step. Cool chords, fourths, use them. Next, a lot of you guys have heard me say this before, the corpse harmony. Skip four frets, one, two, three, four. So you need two guitars for this, or if you're recording, you do a left and a right, whatever, just four frets apart. One, two, three, four. And I have 
happen to be skipping four frets each time there. I could be playing anything here as long as the other guitar player does four frets apart, either lower or higher, or any increment of four. It could be eight frets apart, 12 frets support apart, anything divisible by four. So um, I could be going. And the other guitar player could be going. Or. And so on and so on, as high as you want to go or as low as you want to go. All right, so this riff from uh, Kamira's Pray For All. Matt's playing that, I'm going. Which is exactly four frets higher. Every note. Those are the same, and it sounds cool like that too when you harmonize one part, but then meet up together and play the same thing, and it gives a bolder effect. You know, again, just sprinkling it in there. I could do the entire riff harmonized or whatever, and that would have been cool too, but in this case, we chose to just do these notes, those accents, to harmonize those, and then we come back together for use those all over the place. play four frets lower in that and we do that all over the albums you know just those cool, cool harmonies you could definitely do them with uh with chords too so that's what we call the corpse harmony literally just four frets apart anywhere on the neck or eight frets apart, 12, just like I said, gives a cool, in my opinion, bloody sounding harmony. And we learned those from Cannibal Corpse. Like, I mean, we weren't showing them or anything like that, but I just deciphered it from the music that that's what's happening in a lot of their parts. They do, they're do doing trills. And the other guy's doing four frets apart. Really cool stuff. So that's like a corpse harmony within a corpse harmony. Not only is one guitar player playing four frets apart, but the other one's playing four frets, something different from that and harmonizing, harmonizing it in a cool way. Check them out. Next. Big open full chord. Every band does opens in their songs. Beginning of the song, end of the song, middle of the song, to start a bridge, start a breakdown, whatever. Okay. Every once in a while, they can make it bigger. Two on three, three on two, five on one. Just add that in when you're in a drop tuning. This doesn't work in a standard tuning. It has to be in a drop tuning. Drop D, C, whatever. Cool thing is too, it can move all over the neck. And arpeggiate it. We sprinkle those over the entire Chimera catalog all over the place and it adds for a cool effect. You can write with it like I did with Bloodlust. And speaking, keeping the same chord shape, speaking specifically about my index finger, it's on the third string. Second fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, tenth fret, second fret, five, seven, ten. You can write all sorts of stuff. chord another one out of the arsenal lastly natural harmonics we're not a crazy harmonic band but um we do tend to use them quite often in, in different ways i mean and i don't mean crazy like in an eddie van halen type of way that guy has mastered harmonics all over the neck in super cool ways that uh i haven't even scratched the surface on but our most famous one the beginning of cleansation <laughs> Mm. 
So that right there uh, is the fourth fret of the fifth string and the fifth fret of the fourth string. Playing as a chord too. Now I happen to be right on top of the frets in these, these situations. You can also do them in the middle. And they give a different sound. Listen to this, fourth fret, fifth fret. The middle is generally where the same tone as the fifth fret, same pitch, sorry. And then it changes when you get over the fourth fret. So I like National Harmonics. They work well on five, seven, 12. You can get some on three too. Some different ones there. Famous little riff from, from back in the day, Cleveland hardcore scene. I don't know if this band was from Cleveland, but somewhere in the area. Anybody that can name this, I'll give mad props to. Cool band that uh, and a riff that we all used to love growing up. Uh, anyways, um, you can do cool stuff, obviously. Sanitarium there, it's cool harmonics. Dime bag, Stone Temple Pilots, System of a Down, that. So to get those natural harmonics, I'm not pushing down totally on the fret. I'm just barely touching it. And that just takes a little bit of practice if you've never done one before to get the feel just right. To barely, just barely touch your finger on the string. And by doing that, this creates a certain little friction or something like that changes the pitch into a harmonic. So, um, yeah, lastly, that one for Plensation there, that's obviously how Kamira would start the song Plensation, but a lot of the time, it's how we'd start the set. A lot of bands just start ringing out. You know, to start their set. Oh. Coming on, all right, you know, and you wait for this to turn into feedback. Eventually, the amps overload and start recycling the sound, and it turns into feedback, whether from the PA or from your amps, and you get that. But if you don't want to wait for it, a trick Matt and I would do is right before we went on stage, volume down, you'd hit it, and then slowly bring up my volume. Now that feedback is there already instantly, and the amp will start recycling it, the PA system will start recycling it, it'll turn into a nice, just nice smooth but crisp feedback that you like there so and again just the easy way to get that is fourth fret fifth string fifth fret fifth string again there's a chord you can play So that's going to do it. Just some simple tricks here that I hope you guys can incorporate into your guitar playing arsenal again, whether you've seen them or not. Um, I guarantee that if you check some of them out and try to put them in your playing, that it'll improve some cool stuff there. Some of them are harder than others, you know, and require a little more practice, um, but you, you dedicate yourself and I guarantee that will pay off. You like this sort of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I've got my quick riff series showing off riffs, tips and tricks from Kamira songs songs I grew up listening to. I have a guitar maintenance tutorial series, my everything you love conversation show, talking about Camaro telling stories, having a laugh, interviewing guys, stuff like that. If you want more guitar playing beyond that, I have my instructional DVD that you can get at Rob Arnold World slash store, uh, where I'm autographing those and sending those out worldwide. Get one while you can. And also if you're a Kemper owner, my custom profile pack through tonecrate.com will get you those classic Camaro tones that sound so sweet. So anyways, guys, uh, that's going to do it for this one. I really appreciate anyone that's made it this far. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the support. And I will be back for another one, and I hope you'll be there to join me. Cheers. No,